Hi everyone, hope everyone are keeping safe. The purpose of this video is to give you a demo on Ansible and Terraform playbook that I have written for easily spinning up a Splunk cluster. The reason why I have written this code is ever since I started working from home, I don't really have a Splunk cluster to test out a setting before making change to the customer side. Now since I do a lot of PS engagements, uh, I would really need to test settings and uh, more and sometimes when I have to diagnose a uh, instance or normally we do work on uh, test environments before we actually make changes to the customer side. So every time I needed to check something out or see how Splunks behave, I ended up spending a good 20 to 30 minutes setting up everything and getting the infrastructure up and running. Uh, so during the uh, last break, um, I actually took a course on Ansible and Terraform uh, from Udemy and I, then I realized that I can actually get everything done in less than 5 minutes and this code can be reused again and again. So uh, for all the PS engagements or every time I need to spin up a cluster, all I have to do is run this code. So for this setup, I'm using a AWS free tier and I mostly work only with T2 micros. So that way I don't really have to pay anything to AWS as you know, T2 micros are free. Uh, so I do bump uh, servers up if I have to spin up a ES search it, uh, but then that is for another time. So for this demo, I'm not really showing you the ES setup that I do with Terraform. Uh, so other than that, I have a domain registered with GoDaddy, which I am using for this lab. So this is basically optional. Uh, so I don't like working with public IPs. Uh, so I have my own domain registered. So I just uh, use Terraform to create the records. Uh, so a few prerequisites that I have already done is I have already created the public and the private key for AWS. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Uh, you can check online and find out how it's done there. Uh, the setup I'm spinning, spinning here is we have like a three instances. Uh, one I think as a cluster master and two indexes that are being launched. Uh, so the instances here are being launched to the single VPC. I could uh, spin it up on a private VPC and uh, keep it separate but uh, since the lab doesn't stay on for a long period of time, um, there is no much uh, practical use to that. Um, so if you go to the instances.tf file, uh, the way I have done it is uh, we have the uh, resources that I have defined the resources that we have to spin up so I set the uh, variable names. Uh, so that every time it spins up, it takes a name. So this is quite error, um, is quite flexible. Uh, I can change the count and then the the names as uh, names here, and then the file the file will take by default without making much changes here. Uh, I am spinning up a, a, a different security group uh, with a different uh, name. So the reason why I do this is um, so I can keep my security group and my instances separated. Um, so one thing that I'm doing here is I'm creating the host file for Ansible by default. Um, so I don't have to create it every time using the public IP. So uh, all I'm doing is I'm calling the instances.example, the one that I defined earlier, and I'm just writing the public IP to the Ansible file. Uh, so the other thing that I'm doing is I'm creating the uh, peer account file. Uh, so basically this is the one that goes on to your cluster master and the ones that uh, so that is uh, and, and then the one that goes on to your um, endpoints so that once uh, so the, the way this is supposed to work is once the instances are spun up and once Ansible takes over these files get moved onto your cluster master and to your peers so that if once Plunk restarts it will automatically join the cluster so I created a security group here so I'm, I, I'm, what I'm doing is um, I am pulling my own public IP right um, so I'm pulling the own public IP 
and then I'm writing that specific IP onto my uh, security group and I'm only allowing uh, port traffic from 8000 and port 22 so I'm basically keeping everything tight uh, and then I'm allowing complete access on the um, security group um, inside the security group so the instances inside the SG can talk to each other so now another file that I have is uh, the GoDaddy um, pro uh, the GoDaddy file this is the provider from AWS you can get it from Terraform uh, so I made a few changes here so this is my domain name uh, so basically what what I'm doing here is I'm capturing the public IP of my instance that got spun up and then I'm writing it on to GoDaddy so the cluster master I can call it using cm.flyingrange.com so this is my domain name so I'm doing the same for indexer 1 and indexer 2 so that is specific, uh, pretty much it from the uh, GoDaddy site and then you have your uh, single site uh, you have your Ansible conf file so I'll get into that a bit later uh, so let's actually start spinning up the uh, Terraform cluster so basically I'm doing a Terraform apply with auto approve so I don't have to run the approval again so it's uh, if you're new to uh, Terraform what it does is it does a Terraform plan so basically what it does is um, it plans the whole uh, infrastructure so basically that's what it's doing now and then once the planning phase is done it is going to start doing the app apply a uh, few things I haven't shown here is um, if you are starting new to Terraform you need to uh, configure your uh, AWS access uh, also you know you have to configure your GoDaddy's um, API access keys as well uh, so basically GoDaddy is um, quite f uh, it, it, uh, it provides AWS uh, provides API access for free but then it's an optional step you you can do it uh, if you prefer you to use public APIs you don't really need to do it um, other thing that you have to do before starting this uh, is you would have to set up your um, public IP and private IP file so these are the ones that you you'll be using for accessing your um, AWS instance. So basically, once the Terraform plan is done, and then uh, we can see uh, the the key pairs are getting created, the RB root block devices are being created, uh, EBS block. We do, we are doing those things. We are doing the security group, uh, and then we are choosing the standard default. Uh, as I am for this and then we are selecting T2 micro um, coming down here yeah so this is my public IP uh, so I'm creating the SG within public IP for that okay so now the we can see the instances are spinning up on AWS so once I once the instance is spun up I can actually show it to you on uh, on the uh, AWS console so yeah uh, the domain records have been created and apply have been completed okay so now what we are going to do is I'm going to do the uh, Ansible playbook uh, Ansible playbook and then I'm, I'm doing a single site configuration so this uh, I've written a few uh, playbooks um, I can show you a multi-site uh, configuration that I've done with Ansible as well uh, coming to a single site configuration uh, uh, to coming to my playbook that I wrote for the single site configuration so basically how it does is these are like uh, a few basic step uh, if you are very new to Ansible it might seem a bit uh, overwhelming but it's quite simple so Ansible works on tasks so basically uh, we have a few tasks that we are doing right so basically the tasks are download copy of splunk from splunk.com we are doing the extraction splunk. we are copying the seed file so the seed file is pre-configured so my seed file already have my um, my password configured so I don't have to type it in again then we are starting splunk up 
uh, we are doing a boot start um, okay so we are doing so after once all those things are done we are doing some few advanced configuration on the cluster master so I am copying the um, the, the server.conf file that was created by Terraform earlier onto the uh, Splunk cluster master so that uh, once that Splunk restarts you can actually use it and then once that is done uh, I, I am restarting the cluster master uh, then I'm copying the con files that was created by the uh, by Terraform on the previous step onto the Splunk master application so that that part is done um, then I'm doing a few steps on the indexes so these are the two indexes that I'm spinning up so I'm copying the config file for the indexes from my local desktop so this uh, this has been created by Terraform so I, I didn't really um, write anything here so I'm copying the files onto the uh, location of the cluster peer so basically this is forcing your uh, peers to join the cluster and then once that is done I'm restarting the peer and then uh, I'm applying the uh, cluster bundle so the bundle have been uploaded to Splunk and then once I'm uh, once I once I listen I'm applying the cluster bundle and um, it is done so basically that is the steps here so it's quite basic um, nothing um, serious here so we let's wait for the um, playback to complete running so in the meantime I can show you here so we have okay so we have the three instances that got created by Terraform right uh, so these are the t three indexes so they are marked correctly and these are the uh, public IPs and then if you look here on GoDaddy uh, let me refresh the page so we have the three um, words created as well so these are linked to here so let's go back to our config so now yeah we can see the cluster or each of the tasks are being run and then they are being changed uh, so we are almost at the end of the playbook once the playbook is completed we can log on to the Splunk index the Splunk indexer and we can see the uh, status of the cluster master now uh, it does take a few uh, minutes for GoDaddy to uh, reflect the change that we have created for the uh, for the DNS name uh, so let's actually check and see if it actually picked up so I can do cm dot flying digit so yeah so a new instance got spun up with the name i don't even need the public ip uh, everything is configured my sg is configured and then we are starting up the uh, we have a logging in for the first time okay so i do it like this logging in i don't need it saved And then let's see the status of the cluster. And now we have the cluster ready. Um, so that is pretty much it. Uh, the whole uh, runtime for both the uh, both Terraform and Ansible will be around fourteen minutes. Uh, I mean, around five minutes or four minutes based on your internal connection and uh, speed of your internal connection but yeah i seen my script doing around uh, less than